said just a few words about how fluids in the earth can move through fractures. If you open a fracture, the movement of a fluid is much, much easier than it is in a tight rock. So this is all about fluids. And there are a lot of complexities and very complicated questions that uh, we have not yet been able to answer. The models that we have for fluids in fractures are partly wrong, but there is a lot of research. And in fact, uh, in our institute here, we are also working on fluids and fractures. So if one of you has uh, an interest in doing an, a BSc thesis uh, on, in this theme, then you are quite welcome. OK. So if fractures open in the Earth, like this, then what they can do is they can, for example, allow an oil field, which is this red thing here in the profile, move up one layer further in the Earth crust. So you first form the fold. You collect your oil or gas under this cap. You form the fracture, and the oil moves up. Sometimes the fracture is not open. Sometimes the fracture is actually able to <coughs> seal the movement of the fluids, maybe because the fracture has not come, got any opening, or maybe because the fracture has been resealed by material which is crystallized in the fracture. So these structures, material which has crystallized in fractures, are called veins, Kluftfüllungen in German. Here is an outcrop in Oman, where you can see a grain limestone with these white lines on it. These are fractures which were broken and then crystallized. They were sealed uh, by material precipitating from the fractures. And if you look at them in a microscope, then you can see that there is a lot of complication. The color of this filling of the fracture is different, so there is a whole history to it. And if you make thin sections and look in the polarizing microscope, then you can find all kinds of very bizarre looking and very strange looking microstructures. But the main point is a fracture which forms in the earth can be permeated by hydrothermal fluids, and these fluids can crystallize from their dissolved material forming veins. And some of these veins can be enormous. This is an outcrop from the Oman Mountains. Here is one of my students for scale. And this wide zone, which is about one and a half meters wide, is basically one big vein. There has been a big fracture, which has been permeated by a lot of fluids, forming an enormous amount of calcite, precipitating this calcite. If these fluids contain precious metals, for example, gold or or lead or zinc, then you can have a whole ore deposit forming by flow through these fractures. If we take a sample from a place like this and we cut it, this would be a rock section, maybe about 10 centimeters in this way, then you can see the fracture patterns which we have formed. And then there are other fractures around them, a very, very complicated way that these veins can form. And the main thing to remember uh, for about the formation of these veins is that if a fracture forms, for example, like this, but then it is filled with a material, then the rock has been glued together again. So it is strong. If I would have this fracture open, like this, and I now change my stress and pull on it in this direction, then what will happen is that my bottom block will simply move. But if I have my two blocks 
glued together. And now I pull in this direction. I will get a new fracture like this. OK? So I will get a completely different way that these veins evolve if they crystallize, glue the rock together, and then can form new fractures. But very simply, the process of vein formation is you open a fracture, the fluids go into it, and you grow crystals. I bought a little animation for you, which shows this. This was an experiment that we made in our laboratory in a microscope. So this is a kind of a model rock. This is another model rock here. And through this fracture, which is about uh, two millimeters wide, so it's a very thin little fracture in the microscope, you pump a fluid which can crystallize. And this is what happens. From the fluid, you start growing these crystals, and they grow until they have completely sealed the fracture together. And then, of course, first of all, the rock is sealed. The rock is one piece. And then the fluid flow cannot go anymore, because the permeability of the fracture has been reduced. So the picture that I've shown you here, this one, is a simple one-phase sealing of a fracture. You start and you continue until the fracture is sealed. In many other cases, the sealing of a fracture can be in several phases. This is a very famous building stone. And you can see the big fracture, which was cemented by this white material. And then there was still an opening left because the fluid stopped flowing, or maybe it, there wasn't enough dissolved material. And then in a later stage, the composition of the fluid changed. And you got this gray looking material, which then completely sealed the fracture. So the sealing of a fracture can happen not in just in one phase, but in many phases. And the story that maybe you are now starting to, to get is that in the Earth, many of these veins evolve by repeated fracturing and sealing. So you open a fracture, you seal it, maybe partly, maybe completely. Then you open it again, you seal it, you open it again, and you seal it. And this process is called crack seal. Crack seal is really nothing else than you make a fracture, and then you glue the two halves together. And then you break it again. And you glue the two halves together, you break it again. And this is the famous picture, um, which was drawn by Professor Ramsey in, in 1980, where you have a rock. This is the rock. Here is a fossil which has broken in two. And then every time the rock fractures and it is sealed, it is fractured and it's sealed. So this is basically the thick picture of a thin section, very small area. And each of these lines of inclusions marks the site where the rock has fractured. Some people say that the reason why this happens is because there are repeated cycles of earthquakes opening up the rock and then allowing the fluids to seal. And here is a picture, a thin section picture of a, of a vein like this. This is the rock on this side. And this is the material which is crystallized. And you have these very thin inclusion bands in the thin section showing that the rock has opened and sealed and opened and sealed many, many times. OK. And before I stop this lecture, I will show you just a few pictures 
of veins in the RVTH1 borehole, which we have drilled a couple of years ago in this place here. And uh, probably you have seen some lectures or maybe some explanations of this borehole. This is the drilling rig at the time that we were drilling. Now we have the Super C uh, building standing uh, right above this location. And these are the drill cores which have ta we have taken from the subsurface there. And these are some measurements that we have made um, in this well. This is the gamma ray log and this is the resistivity log. Now, looking at this core, for example, at this place here, you can see a lot of veins. Veins are one of the interesting features of the core of the RVTH1 um, well. And we are currently studying this in one of the research projects. And these are pictures of thin sections of this core indicating that there were a lot of phases of opening and sealing of these fractures. You, you, you see these long crystals which were formed by maybe a hundred or a thousand events of fracturing and sealing, fracturing and sealing, fracturing and sealing. And this was the condition during the Variscan trusting. Uh, be, below Aachen, you have the Aachen trust. And in the Fariscan orogeny, the mountain belt was being shortened and the whole rock pile was being fractured and sealed and fractured and sealed. And this is how the tectonic deformation was accumulated there. So, today we looked at joints, opening mode fractures. I explained to you how these work. I explained to you how they are different from the faults that we talked about before. So these are the opening mode fractures. They form here in the Mohr diagram. I explained to you how these fractures propagate, that there is a very, very high stress at the tip of, of these fractures. I explained to you that there is the damage zone being formed during the propagation of the fracture. And then we talked a little bit about fracture patterns. I explained to you how the abutting relationship allow us to figure out the history of the fracture systems. And then we looked at the distances between fractures, at fracture patterns in different stress fields. And the last part of my talk was about the sealing of fractures by crystallizing materials which restore the strength, glue the rock together, and also stop the fluid flow because the fracture is basically plugged. Thank you very much.